The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It is good to see your smiling faces here at Lakeview Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Dean, and I wish to welcome you to this place tonight. Communion will be served at the end of this play. We believe that it is the Lord's table and that the Lord invites all to come. It will be served by intention. Receive a wafer, dip it into the wine, which is red, the juice, which is white, and then get back to your seats as fast, as quickly as you can, using the side aisles. Because we've got other things to do. We've got another service, right? Okay. So we'll come down the center aisle and, and go to the side aisles. Those of you in the balcony, we will throw your wafers up over the rail. Please be standing there to catch them so you can dip them in the wine. I know, come down whenever you need to. Um, and just join the, uh, the group down, down here. I will be quiet, which is a rarity, um, but I will do that. And oh, and yes, no, no. I'm surprised it wasn't a standing ovation. Um, I want to remind you that during the play later on, there are several carols that everybody is supposed to sing. So as they're being played, they're very familiar to you. Sing along, and then we'll also sing some carols during the communion. Um, and we will depart from that. At the end of the at the end of worship tonight, we're going to think, let the youth and the characters from up here get out before the rest of you leave, so that parents and others, if you're a spouse of one of the performers and you want to take your spouse home tonight after their performance, probably not Jim Dalton, but maybe other spouses, but um, your children and your and, and your partners or whatever, whatever they are will be in the room on the other side of that wall to fellow that's such a good project. Take it away, Ms. Nick. The Herdmans were the worst kids in the whole history of the world. They lied and stole and smoked cigars, even the girl. And they talked dirty. And they cussed their teachers and took the name of the Lord in vain. And they even set fire to Fred Shoemaker's old broken down tool house. Now there were six of them. Ralph, big and tough. <laughs> Emma Jean, who was very mean herself. Leroy, he was no fun to be around. Claude. Real tough, Ollie, and Tommy, maybe the worst of them all. <laughs> and they went through Woodrow Wilson School like those South American fish that clean your bones. They went around town the same way. I mean, they were stealing things and tearing things up and ramming kids. So it was hard to get away from them. There was only one safe place in town. The hour of prayer speed. The hour of prayer speed, hour of prayer. Because there are no permits there. And Jesus loves us as they say, because he keeps them out. That's Charlie. That's what he said when the Sunday school teacher asked what his favorite thing was about church. Charlie said, No purpose. That made the teacher mad because all the other kids said nice things, you know, about God and Jesus and good feelings. But old Charlie told the real truth. No purpose. No Well, 
my seat. And my, I just figured I'd stay home, put on my robe, relax. Besides, there's never anything new about the Christmas magic. Well, if there's going to be something different this year. What's that? Charlie will be wearing your bathroom. Great, <laughs> you just made that up. Here's an idea. Why don't you be Joseph? Elmer Hopkins will pay you ten dollars to be Joseph. He's sick of being Joseph all the time just because his dad's the minister. Nobody really wants to be Joseph. Nobody really wants to be in it. What are you going to be this year? I'm always in the angel choir. Why can't Charlie be in the angel choir? Because I can't sing. <laughs> From what I've heard in the past, that's not a serious drawback. I mean, playing a manger to me always sounds like a closet full of ice. What do you wear in the angel choir? Bed sheets. Oh boy, some choice. Bed sheets are a bathroom. Come on, let's go watch TV. Now, you know, Mrs. Armstrong always does her best to make sure this is a lovely experience for everyone. Oh, Mom, Mrs. Armstrong just likes to run things. Well, you know, they're right, you know. Why, Helen Armstrong directs the Christmas pageant. She's in charge of the bazaar. She runs the potluck. You know, I think she would preach the sermon if anyone would let her. Is that George Armstrong's wife? Yeah, why? Well, she might be directing the hospital, because that's where she is. Well, I saw George down at the drugstore. And he, she broke her leg, and she'll be in traction for two weeks and laid up till the first of the year. The first of the year? They'll have to cancel Christmas! She runs Christmas? Well, she runs the Christmas pageant, and she runs the bazaar. I feel sorry for Helen, but who's going to do those things? Yes. I'll take over the bazaar, Edna, if you do the potluck supper. I don't know what in the world we'll do about the pageant unless... How about Grace? I just can't. I have company all Christmas Eve. How about Grace?
hey, lady, you know where a guy can get a good meal around here? <laughs> I haven't had a square meal in three days. Well, I was very lonely at the table. I guess Helen Armstrong's very lonely in the hospital. Not as long as the telephones are working. Oh, that's what you told about those small parts, only small actors. I'm going to shut the baby angels on him and make the shepherds shut up. Yes, actually. She suggested your father. Does that mean I have to go? <laughs> Don't get just any baby to be the baby Jesus. Get one of those quiet. Get two of them and that way. One of them is going to be fussy. You can always switch them out. Grace didn't pay much attention to Mrs. Armstrong. She said Mrs. Armstrong was stuck in the hospital with nothing better to do than think of problems, and there weren't going to be any problems. Of course, Grace didn't take into account the herdmans. <laughs> that was Charlie's fault. Christmas pageant. What's a pageant? It's like a play. Like on TV? What's it about? It's about Jesus. Everything here is. <laughs> and it's about Mary. Mostly it's about Mary. Who's Mary? I am. Well, probably I am. I know the part. And 
Mary and Joseph must absolutely be here for every rehearsal. Well, they get sick. They won't get sick either, Elmer. Well, Buffy got sick, and we didn't even start yet. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that Beverly got sick. <laughs> now, let's think about Mary. We all know what kind of a person Mary was. She was quiet and gentle and kind. And the girl that plays Mary in our play should be that kind of girl. Now, who would like to volunteer? Oh, Timothy, did you have a question? No, I want to be Mary. And Ralph over there, he wants to be Joseph. Oh. Yeah, right. Oh, well, okay. Well, how about we just start a list of all the names, and then we'll decide who should play the part. So, Ralph Herdman has decided to be, would like to play Joseph. Who else can I add to my list? Elmer, did you raise your hand? <laughs> Anybody? Any volunteers? Any of you shepherds? <laughs> okay, Ralph Herdman will be Joseph. Now, Imogene has volunteered to play Mary. <laughs> Who else can I add to the list? Alice? Don't you want to volunteer? Nope. <laughs> Shut up, Tommy. I'm already married. You'd be a wise man. I'll be a wise man. Me too, but I want to be a wife and raise your hand. What's a wise man? Just raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> What's left to me? Some angel. I'm dead. What is it? Well, that's the angel of the Lord who visits the shepherds. Before they 
clean them out. What was the matter with Grace? <coughs> Why did she make them go away such a home? Oh, I feel responsible. If I had been up and around, this never would have happened. If I had been up and around, this never would have happened. Well, let me tell you. Well, I'm on your side, Grace. The car's over here. You know, I have made Helen Armstrong is not the only woman in the world who can run a Christmas party. I have made up my mind just to do the best I could given the circumstances. But now, I'm going to make sure this is the best Christmas pageant we've ever had. And I'm going to do it with the Herders. You know, after all, they raised their hands and no one else did. And I don't care. Well, I hear you, Grace, but come on, the cupboard's over here. And you're going to help me. Does that mean you have to go? <laughs>
to say anybody was pregnant, especially not in church. And she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. My God, they didn't have room for Jesus? Well, Imogene, nobody knew that the baby was going to be Jesus. Didn't Mary know? Did he know? What was the matter with Joseph that he didn't tell them? Her pregnant and everything. What's a manger? Some type of bed? Well, they didn't have any bed in the barn, so Mary had to make do with whatever there was. What would you do if you had a new baby and no bed to put the baby in? We put Tommy in a bureau drawer. <laughs> well, there you have it. You didn't have a bed for Tommy, so you had to make do with something else. Oh, we had a bed. Only Ollie was still in it, and he wouldn't get out. He didn't like Tommy very much. Remember how he didn't like Tommy? That was pretty smart of Ollie not to like Tommy right off the bat. <laughs> anyway, a manger is a large wooden feeding trough for animals. No, he he wanted up clothes. What? It said in there, she wrapped them in wanted up clothes. Oh, <laughs> swaddling clothes. People used to wrap babies very tightly in large pieces of cloth to make them feel cozy. You mean they tied them up and put them in a feed box? Where was the child welfare? <coughs> child welfare is an hour and a half every five minutes. There wasn't any child welfare in Bethlehem. I'll say there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and there were shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of... Shazam! What?
You keep writing in there. It's like a diary. It is not. It's all about the Herdmans. Imogene curses and swears all the time. Ralph talks about sexy things. Mrs. Bradley... Mrs. Bradley called Mary pregnant. Tommy Herdman drinks communion wine. It isn't even wine, it's grape juice. I don't care what it is, he drinks it. Three times I've seen him with his mouth all purple. And they steal, too. If you shake the birthday bank, it doesn't make any noise because they steal all the pennies on it. And if you go in the ladies' room, the air is all blue. And there's Imogene Herdman in her Mary costume, smoking a cigar. <laughs> and you wrote all this down? Yep. What for? For my mother and the reverend and for the Ladies Aid Society and for anyone else who wants to know what happened the year the Christmas pageant was a big mess.
baby here. Don't touch him. I named him Jesus. No, no, no. You don't say anything. Mary doesn't say anything. Nobody says anything. Mary and Joseph just make a nice picture for us to look at while we're thinking about Christmas and what it means. Now put the baby back. <laughs>
everyone seems to think that it's going to be, um, well, uh, uh... A disaster? Hey! They're wrong. It's going to be the best Christmas pageant we've ever had. But Grace, I don't think anyone will come to see it. <laughs> No one, uh, no one thought so. No one thought so either. Neither did Charlie. Everyone was wrong. Christmas Eve, church was, uh, yeah. Christmas Eve, the church was jammed full. Everyone came to see what the Germans would do.
way she could just burping a baby like a cat's colic. She probably could have had colic just like any other baby. Yeah, she still shouldn't be burping it. <laughs> oh, so what? Give them a break. They came a long way, they have a new baby to worry about, and they don't have a place to stay. Oh, Ralph and Imogene? No, Mary and Joseph. And in that region there were shepherds in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night.
happened just that way. We all thought the pageant was uh, Jesus, but that was one part of it. It was about a new baby, his mother and father, who were in a whole lot of trouble. No money, no place to go, no doctor, nobody they knew. And then, arriving from the east, like my uncle from New Jersey, some rich friends. <laughs> because of the herdmans, it was a whole new story. Imogene, both of them baby. Wise men bring such a sensible present. After all, they couldn't eat frankincense. And even Tommy, he's in the barn, go we'll see him. So the shepherds didn't have to stumble around all the countryside. But I guess it wasn't like that for Imogene. For her, the Christmas pageant turned out to be all wonder and mystery, as, as if she just got out of what Christmas was all about. When it was over, we had a party in the basement. The Herbins didn't say, didn't take any cocoa, didn't work off the cookies, they wouldn't even take the candy candy. Well, I guess that's about it. Anybody left downstairs? No, nope, everybody's gone. You're wearing your bathroom, you know. Well, I thought I might. I might get mistaken for a shepherd. Wouldn't mind being mistaken for a shepherd in this Christmas bed. Yes, you would. Some lady after the play came up to me, hugged me because I was a shepherd in this play. Should I bring this ham? No, that's the Herman's ham from their welfare basket. I wanted to give it back, but they wouldn't take it. Leroy Herman said, it's a gift, and you don't take back a gift. Leroy said that they must hate ham. <laughs> yeah, even Alice. Oh well, what about the lights? Well, they're out of time. They'll go off at midnight. It's almost here. It's almost Christmas. Almost Christmas, kids. <coughs> almost Christmas, Charlie. with us 
and to show us your gracious love and mercy. With all the earth and with all of heaven, we praise you and we call you holy. And on the night in which your son was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this. Remember me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and eat. The meal has been prepared. I would ask